Hi, this is Megan Jacks, Creative Memories Independent Advisor, and today I'm going to show you how to make a 10 inch sunburst pattern using two pieces of 5x10 designer paper. The sample I show here uses the Citrus Summer Collection, but for today's demonstration, I'm going to be using two pieces from the National Scrapbook Day collection. So the first thing I've done is I've trimmed both of my pieces of paper to 5x10, and I'm going to go ahead and mark my first piece for cutting. So the key to this one is using the 30 degree angles. So it'd be 0, 30, 60, and then coming back here at 0, negative 30, negative 60. So I've lined up my paper, I'll use my ruler, and I will mark at 6 inches on both sides, or my 0 degree marks. I then I'm going to swing up and line up with 30 degrees, making sure I'm coming through my um, zero degree mark on the um, center of the right side of the paper. And I would come down here after I've lined it up and mark on the left hand side of the paper. I've already gone and marked all of the angles because it is an area where you're going to want to take the time to do it accurately on both pieces of paper. But for the interest of time on this particular video, I've gone ahead and marked them already. So then I would come up and do 60 degrees and then swing around, grab negative 30. And one last one lined up here with negative 60. So I've already got my pivot point and I've got my angle marked on the left hand side. Then I'll go ahead and grab my trimmer and I'll use my straight blade. And the first cut I'm going to do is going to be this bottom edge. So I line up my pivot point on the top and swing around and grab the bottom part and this is where you, once again, you're going to want to take the time to make sure you line up everything as precisely as possible. And I'm going to come in and using the straight blade, go ahead and cut. I keep my pivot point the same. I'm going to swing around and grab the next pencil mark. Now I like to cut from the top down, so I'm going to cut my narrow point first. And I keep swinging all the way around, lining everything up. Once again, I always start from the top and pull down. And I'm going to come around here and grab this one. I have one last cut to do. So I have all my cut pieces. You would repeat this same steps, the measurements and the cutting on the second piece of paper. In the interest of time, I've already done that on a separate piece. So I have all of my pieces done for both um, pieces of paper. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start playing around with the overall design. Now I know for this particular paper, I don't wanna use the busier plaid side. So I'm gonna lay everything out, every other piece, with the polka dot paper. And then I'm gonna play around with the two sides of my designer paper, or the other paper. I'm actually gonna switch this one around. It has a few more strawberries. And then, so this side will be the darker teal and just keep playing until you find the design that you like. Now I am only using three of my four sides. Like I said, one piece of the, um, one side of the designer paper I thought was just a little too busy for this design. If I were to flip it over, would see for me, I just feel that's a little too busy, especially with the strawberries in there. So we're keeping it a little more basic. So I like this um, overall look. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to separate it using my hands. Now I have a piece of five by five um, paper here and I'm going to use my repositionable adhesive and I'm going to put a lot on here. And I normally wouldn't use this as much adhesive, but it's um, necessary in this case. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start lining this up and it doesn't have to be perfect. This first piece can go on kind of however you want. Um, so I'm going to lay it in the first one. Now the second one and following is where you want to be a little bit more precise. So my second piece, I'm going to come in, I'm going to line up here at the point, and I'm really going to pay attention to this edge here at the bottom. So I want to be snug along the seam, but I want it to line up right here at the bottom so that it starts to make that exterior square. And I'm just going to go all the way around. And I'm using repositionable adhesive because I might have to fidget with this at the end to get some of the spacing right. Now I try to be as exact as possible when making my cuts, but I am human and sometimes they're just not as perfect as they could be. Keep going all the way around. So now I'm going to come here at the top, reorient myself to what piece was next. And you can play around with your paper patterns. Um, I have found that um, using patterns that don't have too much of a direction to them so they can be upside down works great. So that's why the polka dots, the strawberries all work really well. If you have anything that requires, um, has a specific direction to it, it sometimes can get a little um, messed up, but it may not be too bad. So just play with it, find the patterns you like, and just give it a shot. So here, this actually is gonna line up pretty good. I've had some where my design has been off a little bit more, and it's not as noticeable when it's just on the gray mat. But the next thing we're gonna do is once we have our overall design done, is I have a piece of 10 and a half by 10 and a half um, cardstock that I've actually, for this particular one, I've used this stamping blade on the 12 inch trimmer to give myself a little bit of a decorative edge. And that's what I'm gonna go ahead and put my design on, which is why it's nice that I have this paper on the back. It makes it easy. For me to lay it on here and it's really not too bad at all um, sometimes if my if things aren't lined up you'd see a little bit more space in between and I'm pretty satisfied with how these pieces are all fitting so I don't have to make any adjustments and then to finish off the basic page design I would go ahead and put it on a piece of 12 by 12 paper so you can have a straight um, alignment here. You can offset it a little bit. You can use um, borders or other things in here. I have a um, border I could use at the bottom if I wanted to. And this is, you know, just a design to have a lot of fun with. Something I do want to point out is because we're using a five by 10 piece of paper, this is actually a really good project to do with happy album paper. So if you have some happy album kits that you haven't done anything with, um, here is one done with a happy album kit. So I use two pieces of the um, happy album paper, which is already trimmed to 10 inches by six by um, six and three quarters. So you just have to trim it down to five by 10 and then repeat everything I just showed earlier. And then I've matted it to some navy cardstock here and this is just using a tonal paper from the vitamin C collection. A great part about the Happy Album kits is they do come with some additional items already. So um, I was able to use the little um, mats from the kit and for this design, I've gone ahead and grabbed some of the um, Beneath the Pine embellishments and layered those on there. So it would be something along those lines.
So I hope you'd enjoy the video, some great ideas here, and I hope to see you soon.